Well, EU, uh, Spain has always been very, very committed to, to the European Union and European integration since it joined the, the European Union. So it's a very pro-integrationist uh, country. Uh, its vision is that uh, Spain needs, uh, Europe needs to hold together uh, in, in face of Brexit, for instance. So the main ambition of, uh, of Spain is that uh, Brexit does not repeat itself in other, in other countries. And to do that, of course, it has some uh, uh, balanced feelings, I would say, about, about Brexit, because of course the bilateral ties are very, very, uh, very deep with the United Kingdom, between Spain and, and the United Kingdom, but also the most important thing for Spain is to keep the EU27 together. So in that, in that regard, most probably, the position of Spain on Brexit will be not to promote very much its bilateral ties with, with the UK after Brexit, but rather to make sure that the 27 remain, remain together. Yeah, I would say that Spain has mixed feelings about uh, uh, about multi-speed Europe, in the sense that, uh, of course, as I said, it's very pro-integrationist. So, so that means that, uh, in in that sense, anything that divides or that makes Spain think that different speeds of integration might happen is not really seen as a good opportunity in the sense that it would like everyone to be on board from minute one and move together towards more integration. That's the, the more common position in, in Spain. But at the same time, it sees Brexit and multi-speed Europe as an, as an opportunity in the sense that, um, of course, there is a refurbishment of alliances in the EU after Brexit. That means that the big three is gone of the picture, of course, with the UK leaving. We only have France and Germany in the lead. And that's not enough for Spain. Spain would like to be involved in this core group of, of, of countries. And that's what Versailles told us uh, at the conference in Versailles, where Italy and Spain joined France and, and, and Germany in defining the future of Europe. This makes Spain think that it can be back on the core Europe. So uh, it has to play on both, uh, on both dimensions. On the one hand, keeping the EU together, the EU27 together, and multi-speed then poses a problem in that regard, in a certain sense. But at the, other, at the same time, it wants to take advantage of the opportunity of playing big in European politics. And this is something that uh, we've seen from Versailles onwards and that the current Spanish government is fighting for, in a sense of being involved in, in all major decisions of reform, be that Tesco, uh, Eurozone reform, uh, Schengen, any kind of big files that are there in the, in the negotiation, now Spain wants to be, to be in. Of course, Spain, uh, the first one is recovery from the crisis. Uh, the crisis has hit Spain very hard. Uh, it has turned Spain into uh, a bad pupil of uh, European integration since it has suffered a lot from, uh, from the crisis. But the truth is that it has tried to catch up pretty quickly. It has followed really the main guidelines of, uh, of Eurozone uh, uh, austerity policies. Uh, so it has been very pro-austerity and this has created big problems in, inside, so in, in, in the political, in the political uh, internal situation. But of course it has tried to show, to Germany in particular, that it has to remain a, a good pupil. Uh, and as such, uh, that it can play um, in the table of the big guys and be there, be there in, in front. So consolidation of economic recovery for Spain is a must. And once this consolidation is achieved, then it will want to kind of have uh, a benefit from this uh, being a, a good, good purple that I, that I mentioned now. Um, so, so first is, is, is uh, Eurozone reform, of course it will, it will play big on that, accompanied by a social dimension, not to lose uh, the, the idea of a social dimension of, of, of economic integration, and also second, uh, security and defense. Security and defense for Spain is, is very important and it has always been very committed to the CFSP and the CSDP. The alliances, of course, uh, um, of Spain uh, will be natural in a sense. I mean, it, it knows that with Italy, although it has a love-hate relationship with Italy of uh, who's bigger or who's, who's most important in EU integration, uh, it understands Italy to be a central player after Brexit. It understands, of course, France to be a central player after Brexit. Same for, for Germany. So Spain will try to be a balancing act and, and, and get along well with all, with all these countries in a sense to consolidate its own position within the big four. Huh? Not playing alone, but rather trying to have all these countries together for the future of the EU integration, EU27 holding together. So that's the big line. For, with countries such as Ireland, for instance, and this in, in, with regards uh, Brexit, um, of course, Spain, uh, as Ireland, is very exposed 
to Brexit. Spain is very exposed for tourism reasons. Number of expats, of UK expats living in Spain is the largest number. No? In Spain, there are the particularly pensioners and, and, and old people living in Spain. So the bilateral ties are very important, not to mention the Gibraltar issue, which is also very important for, uh, for Spain. But as Spain is very exposed to Brexit, so is Ireland. So I assume, I, I assume that both countries will try to uh, have uh, the same position as they've had during the withdrawal agreement. That is, putting all the weight behind the Commission and the Commission leading the, uh, the, the negotiations and of course supporting the role of the Commission. So I see a lot of scope for cooperation between uh, Spain and Ireland in that regard.